Welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm Mike Lane, and today we're going to be taking a look at the BMW i4 M50. It's a pretty fancy car. Uh, price as evaluated is north of $80,000, and I'm impressed with that already. First, I want to take a quick look at the exterior. BMW has chosen to style this EV very similarly, like their, or exactly, I'm not sure, their um, ICE vehicles, internal combustion engine. And I think the idea is to be able to show that it's a BMW i4, no matter if it's EV or ICE. Uh, down low right here, you can see one of the anomalies, if you will, on the grill. This is a, a forward-looking radar. This vehicle, with regard to its ADAS functionality, advanced driver assistance systems, it's got three forward radars, two on the corners and the main one we just showed you. In addition to forward-looking cameras on the vehicle, we've got a trinocular camera, if that's a word I just made up, I don't know, but a uh, three-lobe camera uh, up at the top that's gonna handle uh, most of your ADAS. We're not sure where the, the uh, exact computing is, but distributed computing would be up with the camera. There's also surround view in this vehicle, 360 surround view, not unlike other vehicles. There's a camera in the uh, outside mirrors, both sides. Going around the vehicle, I believe there's a rear, rear radar units on the outboard sides. Rear camera here under the BMW logo. And again, not unusual to vehicles now is now's the days we've got six ultrasonic sensors for park assist both in the front and the rear this vehicle one of the options that comes with the uh, m series is carbon fiber uh, the paint job was a thousand dollar option and i don't know much more about this vehicle josh here's the camera i missed there's a there's a camera lobe that i forgot to point out and the M badge is the traditional BMW M badge. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump in this baby and see if I can stay out of either the hospital or jail. As this is not you know, a total vehicle evaluation, I, I, but I will provide some high points on my opinion, which is just subjective, is the seats look rather average, although they are comfortable. I'm not wild about the um, non-integrated display. It's a large display split into two portions for basically driver and other functions uh, like you'd have in a typical vehicle with regard to your um, cockpit and uh, peripheral functions. It's certainly colorful and for me I found slightly confusing at first to sort out everything but once you get to know where to look everything's there. So we're going to take it on the road a little bit and see if we can engage some uh, driver assistance and see how it performs. I can hear it's got a, I don't know that it comes across on the video, but it's got a low engine noise coming out of the vehicle. Uh, a typical engine noise as in a rumble, which kind of cracks me up because obviously it's an electric vehicle. Uh, this vehicle does have head up display, which I find handy, especially when we get at higher speeds. I don't want to look at this confusing mess down here. I want to keep my eyes on the road. So what we're going to do for our viewers is do a quick launch in this industrial court, but we're going to be very careful because we've got traffic coming and going at the end of a work day. So I'm going to be patient here. All right, um, let's go. That was two miles an hour relatively quickly. Yeah, it's impressive. The vehicle has three driving modes settable uh, here in the center console, Sport Comfort and Echo Pro, Eco Pro. Um, it's been set to Sport and I'm gonna leave it there because I'm feeling sporty today. Again, personally, I'm not a fan of the layout here in that the steering wheel blocks a significant portion of it for me. Um, if I was taller, I don't see that getting any better, but um, it's not a problem, it's just a preference. All right, so I'm gonna engage assisted driving mode, which is a combination of lane centering, 
um, adaptive cruise control and not hands-free driving because I have to keep my hands near the steering wheel uh, but it's set at 86 which is a little aggressive let's see what happens uh, as I approach the vehicle in front of me I would expect I hope <laughs> uh, that the vehicle backs off and it is the head-up display is indicating the speed limit 70 so I can't say officer I didn't know but the vehicle's allowing a safe distance from the car in front of me. Perfect. And similar to the Rivian, if I just maintain some touch with the steering wheel on occasion, it doesn't complain. So I'm going to intentionally pull the steering wheel a little bit to the side of the lane, and I feel torque on the steering wheel. It brings it back all by itself give me a little indication uh, both on the steering wheel there's a LED on both sides of the steering wheel built in and there's a dash indicator this green steering wheel turns yellow now this is going to be interesting this guy wants to get in front of me and change his mind yeah let's do a lane change good idea so I'm going to put on a signal and see the vehicle change lanes automatically um, obviously wouldn't do that without uh, checking the sensors to make sure that the area was clear and we're coming into a slight curve. A little slow to react, but it did track the curve and we're in a merging situation. Well, let's see what happens. I'm just going to hang my thumb on the steering wheel and try not to affect it. So again, we're still set at 86, which is ridiculous because we're in rush hour traffic or near rush hour traffic. And as a matter of fact, 86 might be ridiculous anytime, boys and girls. <laughs> um, and we're traveling 62 miles an hour. Uh, I'm getting a warning. Oh, that thumb on the steering wheel wasn't enough. I had a red graphic come up on the dash that said, do something, as well as the audio feedback, which I appreciate the audio feedback because if I'm watching the road, it's a little bit more difficult to watch the dash. All right, let's try that lane change again. I'm gonna go to the left lane. So all I need to do is activate the signal and after two or three flashes of the signal or audio indicator, it, the vehicle automatically changed lanes. That's convenient. All right, so I just tapped the brake to, to take the vehicle out of its uh, assisted driving mode, it's called see how things how that changes handling and where obviously that I'm driving the vehicle as you always are no matter what a driver assist system you're using at L1 or L2 and if I pull the steering wheel to cross the white line it is trying to pull me back into the lane so lane centering is still active yep it hit so I've got the ability to switch between assisted driving mode and distance control which is essentially adaptive cruise control. So, yep, I'm out, I'm out of the lane keeping, and I should be on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna override the accelerator to get a little closer here and see what happens. Man, I, we are way too close to this guy. We're missing something here. Let's get around this guy. Which that was easy to do. Yeah, there's no doubt acceleration is not a problem with this vehicle. No shortage of G-forces. But yeah, as Josh is mentioning, uh, he can see the icons from the passenger seat and I can't see them from the driver's seat, blocked by the steering wheel. And I suppose I could move things around, but I would like the driving configuration and wouldn't want to change anything. So I'm going to complain. I don't like where that's at. Oh, and now I get a, a message on the dashboard, keep in lane. Probably a good idea. So active lane keeping isn't engaged. It's a passive system. I, I should take back my words. I say I don't like it. It's better than nothing. It's passive. It's helping me as a driver. Um, it's what qualifies as 8S for sure, and I'm just being a crybaby. We're approaching a merge situation. And let's see if I lane change. It does that fine. 
fix up a little. Yeah, this works well. So off the light here, we've got uh, speed limit control activated to limit us at 50 miles an hour. We're in a 45 zone, and as soon as Pokey gets out of the way in front of us, we'll see if it works. Uh, we're going to change lanes here. And indeed it does. I've got the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor, and we are limited to 50 miles an hour. Very nice. So if I want to modify that, I would take the thumb wheel, rotate it up to 55, immediately picks right up, rotate it down, immediately breaks right down, independent of my accelerator input. That works well. Yes. All right, so we have an, we have an always on safety set, well, always on because we activated it, of forward collision mitigation. And that should not allow me to get dangerously close to the vehicle in front of me it's a little, I'm a little tentative about testing it because who wants to push the limits on a potential collision? All right, so I'm approaching a vehicle in a 45 at 45. And this is too close. All right, oh, it came on just about the time I saw a head up display come on. I would prefer to see that come on a little bit earlier and maybe there's a way to set it uh, but we've got it set to forward collision mitigation early and I'm not comfortable with that so I was chickening out and backing off it appeared that the vehicle was doing it I was getting a big red icon in the head-up display uh, that appeared to be like crash imminent kind of icon nice job graphics folks but vehicle handles very well as much as I want to push it. I tell you the head-up display is very helpful and while I was critical of a little bit of the I, I can't see enough of the information on the dash in front of me uh, I can see the road very well. Um, the mirrors are set up nicely so the driving experience for me is fine. Uh, maybe I'm being a little picky about the dashboard but uh, Knowing where there are icons where I need to look, I can adjust my, tilt my head a little bit, adjust my uh, perception. But, all right, I think I'll take it.